then so far this week? It was good. Um, Monday I thought was good. We were fresher, you know, coming off the, the three three day break. So I thought Monday was good. We, we did more than we do on a typical Monday, but didn't try to overdo it with them coming back. And then um, we had our normal end season Tuesday today, and the guys seemed good. Yeah, Coach Flores starting a true freshman at quarterback in this game, and Lagway. What stood out to you about him? What's that? Uh, uh, DJ Lagway starting for Florida as a true freshman. What stood out to you about him? Well, a lot stands out. He's he's got great size. He's got great arm strength. Um, he's got really good pocket mobility. Um, he's got a great offense around him. Um, you know, they do a good job. They run the ball, and they set up shots off of their run. And um, when you're stubborn about running it, then you, you, you open yourself up to a lot of play action shots. <clears throat> and he throws a great deep ball. He has been very consistent with that. And um, I mean, he, he seems mature beyond his years because it would be different if this was his first game. But he's he's played quite a bit this year. You know, he's played really well. <clears throat> yeah, Lane Kiffin had some comments yesterday voicing his complaint about not getting a 7.30 home game from someone who's gotten to host some of those over the years. What kind of impact does hosting, you know, 7.30 prime time kickoff game have on both your program, both in season, but also with recruiting as well? Yeah, I don't see a big difference in 3.30 and 7.30 in terms of recruiting. I mean, you know, they can come to the game either way. Um, you can make a case the atmosphere is better at night. I get what he's saying there, but my concerns are Florida. Yeah, Coach, I've heard you talk about quarterbacks stepping up through the smoke and being able to manage pockets. Is that an innate ability in quarterbacks, or is that something you feel like you can coach or have progress in a player? Yeah, both. I mean, I don't know that anybody's born with it. Um, the well-coached guys are good at it because they've been coached to do it at a young age. Some guys have never been coached to do it, and um, they, they have to learn. Um, so I think it's a, a trait that you can have. It's a trait that you can experience, and once you have success doing it, it tends to, to uh, be successful, especially when you have the ability to tuck it up and run. There's, there's always more air vertical in the pocket than there is escaping around it unless you're just a super freak athlete and you can outrun everybody going around it. What have uh, Tate and Jordan Hall been able to do so far this week? <coughs> um, both have ramped up in terms of reps. Uh, Tate um, took quite a bit yesterday, took quite a bit. I don't know how many he took today, but I know it's more than yesterday because we had more available, but we're trying to be smart in terms of this volume. Um, and Jordan's done more. You know, he still has moments where it bothers him. Uh, but you know, I thought yesterday was Jordan's best day yet, and that, I think that three-day off really helped him. Um, I have to watch today and see how he was. I don't really remember. Yeah, Kirk, just what have you seen from Trevor, uh, specifically in the passing game? You guys had a couple games with six catches, I think. Just how has he developed? I guess as a as a weapon in the passing game for Carson. Yeah, he's he's a really good receiver. Um, he catches the ball well out of the backfield as most of our backs do. Nate does, Cash does. Um, he's he's a he's a really good. I mean, you know, if you play man to man, he's one on one with the backer. If you play zone, then he uh, can catch the ball underneath and turn it into a big game. So, you know, those all backs that they can catch the ball out of the backfield are just you know that much more dangerous because. It's hard to get through the defensive lines in the SEC. It's much easier when you catch the ball past them. Um, you, you get to uh, exploit that and, and have some explosives, and he's a good pass catcher. Coach, talking about Tate ramping up, and of course, Michael has been battling through his thing pretty long. What impact does that have on teammates when they see guys like that, you know, <coughs> two leaders, whatever you want to call them, willing to fight through the, to make it back like they are? Yeah, I think that, you know our players respect injuries. They, they, I mean, almost every guy on our team has missed some, you know, some practice at some point in time during their career. So um, they appreciate those guys giving effort to come back. I think it, you know, gives more depth and confidence to everybody um, when guys are back. But you know, I just respect both of them because they they tried to play hurt. You know, in this day and age, not everybody's willing to play hurt. And Michael, particularly, you know, he's. He's got a lot of stake, and, and he knows that he's not 100%, but he's been out there competing for his team and showing his toughness, and he's played pretty well. Uh, kind of staying along the same lines, Branson and Smile, uh, how are they doing their recovery, and, and are they close to maybe getting back out there and being able to practice? <coughs> Again, I don't know what timeline 
on either one of those guys. Uh, so when you say closer, I mean, they're, they're closer because they're closer than they were yesterday. <laughs> but I don't know how close they are. I don't know uh, what it looks like for, for them in terms of when they're able to come back. Another question? Coach, are, uh, are you playing hurt right now? Sounds like you're I just got a cough. I can't figure it out. I hadn't, I hadn't been able to beat it since uh, since Texas. I mean, since we got back, I've been uh, I feel fine. I mean, I just I got a little throat deal. I've been coughing bad and hadn't been able to get rid of it. But I don't feel bad. I just can't get over this cough. Kirby, I'm not sure if uh, Trevor Eakin was was on your radar out of high school, but how, how well have you gotten to know his family as a you know, portal transfer. Is that hard to do? Um, yeah, I would definitely say it's harder to do than a high school recruit. We don't, um, we don't always. I mean, we meet the family when they come on visits and talk to them. I've got to meet his mom, you know, and, and communicate with her. And she's a great lady. He's a great kid. But it's it's so different when they're you know they're older, and uh, a lot of them are making the decision for different reasons. You know, like it's a it's a move. That I, and I'm not saying his specifically, but several of the people we've taken, it's like it's a one-year deal, it's a two-year deal, it's looking for a change, it's, uh, you know, whatever. Um, but he's been great. He's been awesome. But I have not, you know, I, I didn't get to go recruit him, sit in his house, have the, you know, the sophomore, junior, senior year relationship and all those kind of things. But you also get more valid uh, information about people usually because you call the place that he's leaving. And, and to be honest with you, most coaches will shoot you straight. You know, they'll tell you. Um, just like when the people call us about kids and ask, we're going to tell them the truth. You know, what was their class attendance? What was their practice habits? What what kind of kid are they? Yeah, what have you seen out of K.J. Bolden these last couple of weeks, and how big is this bye week that always sort of falls this time of year for freshmen in terms of getting them further up to speed and getting them further reps in practice? Yeah, K.J.'s been great. He's, uh, he's been really confident in his checks. He's, he's extremely smart for a guy's age. He had no... Had no real issues picking up our defense, um, and that comes from his high school background, and really from his just in, instinctiveness and uh, intelligence. He's a very bright kid. He communicates really well. Um, he's got a lot of confidence in, in the defense. He's got confidence in his ball skills. So uh, it's been about physicality with him and maintaining his weight. We've really tried hard to keep his weight up um, because this is a long grind that he's not used to. And um, but I'm pleased with what. KJ's done to this point. And what he can do, all our freshmen, they, they, they used last week to get more reps and gain more ground. Nick Griffin, to, to kind of follow up on that, I like you said yesterday, last week was to get a lot of freshman reps. How much does a second bye week help as far as one? How much does it help, I guess, freshmen get farther along having a second bye week? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think, I don't look at last week as it was a freshman deal. It was a total team. Like we worked our entire team, and that's more than freshmen. I mean, we, we worked everybody. Now, some of our older players took less uh, live reps, but they, they, they did a lot more drill work, um, drill specific things. Um, but last week was a total team improvement um, goal. But the two bye weeks, you know, I feel like this year we've had more injuries than we've ever had. I mean, we're dealing with it right now more than we've ever had. I don't know if that's a fact. I don't know if we got – I just feel like with the two starters we've missed on the line, the how beat up we're on the line, the D-line, how it was the start of the year, it's really been a – I mean, we just had more lost time starters. The two bye weeks has helped a little bit with that because um, the schedule's been just tough. Just brutal. It's, you know, it's not getting any easier. So, you know, you need that less depth, more injuries – the two bye weeks has to, has to help so yeah one more injury guy joseph john or johnny didn't make the trip with you guys to texas <laughs> yeah joseph had to deal with a uh surgery that's going to put him out for the uh, rest of the year he's going to be out um the rest of the year he's dealing with a lower extremity injury that uh, he's not going to be with us but he's already had the surgery he, he had it uh before we went to i guess he had the surgery after but he didn't get to go to texas because of the injury <laughs> Kirby, in, in general, the run game, do you feel like there was a lot of positive momentum coming out of Texas? And, and how do you feel about it in general and its effectiveness at this point? Well, it depends on who I'm playing. So I'll tell you about the first quarter and how I feel about the run game. 
because it's it's you know I mean everybody wants to it's like the pass game it's, it's relative to who you're going against and it's relative to how they're playing you and you know not everybody's played us the same and not everybody has the same um, X's and O's up there you know like we don't really change our run game game to game right we, we have different window dresses nobody does you can't put new runs in so you don't invent runs you you take the runs you've worked on all year round and you say okay how do these work against these fronts and in some cases they they've worked really well you know we, we've had a, a different lineup at, at two positions and really kind of a merry-go-round with guys playing up there so there hasn't been great continuity I don't think that's really affected us I think it's been you know, Trevor getting used to, to being in there, getting Nate warm, had Branson, lost Branson, had Jared, lost Jared, had uh, Tate, lost Tate, and it's just, you know, it's been a bunch of different people, but uh, I'm very confident in our run game and our ability to run the ball because people have to honor our ability to throw the ball, and uh, that's one of the things we do well, so they, they complement each other. Any more questions? All right, thank you, Coach. Thanks. Thank you.